Good morning. Welcome to, is it stage nine? Moving along here. So I'll try to talk faster, paint faster, since these things have been getting a little bit longer each day. Yesterday I was pretty tired, and that may be part of the reason why it ended up being almost 20 minutes long. So again, painting every stage of the Tour de France, showing you how I create one each day and talking about what's happening in the tour and also how to create a good, exciting, interesting, pure colored watercolor. Hope you're enjoying these or if this is your first one, welcome. Please be sure to give the uh, page a like. I would love more subscribers. I would like to get my Art of Cycling title to the channel. Can't do that until I have a certain number of followers so truly appreciate you helping out with becoming a follower so this is Tis Venute on the first and only Cat 1 climb of the day today Tis is the uh, teammate of the leader in this competition who's not out in the group so another team strategy is to have another teammate go out and try to pick up all the points and there for keeping his teammate who is in the lead of the group from um, having to worry about losing that lead and the very least if they lose it it stays within the team sort of strategy yesterday it was closer to the teammate and stage winner of um, his name will come to me in a second, Thomas de Ghent. By Thomas de Ghent going out, he's now in second place. But should he have taken over the race lead, Lotto Sadal could have at least contented themselves in knowing that, well, we still have the polka dot jersey, even if Tim Wellens is no longer holding it. So I kind of like this image for this triangle a reverse triangle of the crowds on each side as the rider in the center the apex of the triangle um, fills that area with the long view of the valley down below they are in the Loire region in this climb oh, lost it it had Loire in the title there it is. It's the Orec sur Loire. All right, so that's the line work. And we'll call this climbing for the teens, since that covers what we were just talking about. Of course, today is Bastille Day, French Independence Day. French are excited to have the day off for one thing, but to have a Frenchman in the yellow jersey. I knew when Julien Alaphilippe took the jersey the first time that it had been a long time since I had seen a Frenchman in the yellow jersey. I later learned that it had indeed been quite a long time, something like five years. So right now, Julien Philippe, who's already a big hero of the French cycling world, is all the more so now that he has worn the yellow jersey and then he has even further delighted the French by retaking the jersey after losing it, which does not happen all that often. Um, there is commentators on NBC were having a debate today about whether he should be considered a contender. They have a group of uh, riders who are anticipated to be the overall winner once we get to Paris in another, what, we're on stage nine, another 12 stages. And the, the big debate is whether or not Philippe should be considered a contender. The general consensus is no, 
but people have been underestimating him already. They didn't think he would keep the jersey when he did, and they didn't think he would get it back, yada, yada, yada. So again, working through all of the colors of the color wheel, starting with the warm, as you want your warm colors to stay warm and bright, you really don't want them to get muddied. And one of the ways, the best way to control that is to not have any wet, cool colors near your surface near your, on your page while you're painting. In that way, you, can't, you won't end up making mud. Pretty simple, right? So since it's Bastille Day, I figured it'd be important to, I mean, it's here in the image. That's one thing you can't see is what I'm painting from. And again, the way I do this is I'm watching the race unfold live, see an image that appeals to me, pause the video, and start painting. And that, why, what I choose to paint is based on the story of the race, and what's happening in the image that relates to the story of the whole tour up until this point, or the tour in regards to this stage. Now looking for a blue, we'll start with the, so I'm in the cool colors now, did the green first, switching to the blues. Now I will come back and hit the background green. So I think I've said this before, but unlike oil painting, I find it better to do the background last when I'm doing watercolors, because I want to get the unpolluted clean colors in the foreground. In oil painting, you would actually do it the other way around, paint the background first and then paint your foreground because your edges can then overlay, but it, that's an opaque medium, so that's the technique for an opaque medium. But in a translucent medium like watercolors, you can't overlay colors. You could try, you're gonna get a big muddy mess. Right, sorry, I'm pausing, trying to think my colors here. So I'm laying in some of the valley below now. So now I'm starting to lay in some of that background. Spots of fields. And the forest down below. And now I want to gray that out a little bit. So there's some red right here. So to gray out a color, to dull it, this is exactly what I was saying, but this time I'm doing it intentionally, taking the greens and mixing them with their complement. And then also now I'm gonna add a little bit of blue just to add the atmosphere. So if you'll notice as things disappear into the distance, they lose the strength of their color, so they get paler. And then they also turn bluer because you're looking through more and more oxygen into the distance. Beautiful clear day in the Loire Valley. Happy to say I've had the opportunity to be in the Loire Valley first way, way back in the 70s. Yes, I'm that old. So all of these works are created using these cake watercolors, that's what this tray is. They're called St. Petersburg watercolors. They are from the company Richson Art. I'll put their website in there. They are just fabulous. 
really beautiful bold color. It's a big part of why I'm able to create these vibrant watercolors. You know, I said some things about how you keep your watercolors vibrant. Of course, it also helps to start with well-made, well-pigmented watercolors to begin with. And then just control the mixing of that high quality watercolor. All this work is available for sale. And you can see all the Tour de France artwork at my blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com. And once you're there, as you look at each painting, you'll also be provided with a link through to the website where should you want to, you can purchase the pieces. And I would appreciate, like I say, any subscribers, any thumbs up, any comments, questions you want to ask, I can also try to address in the following videos because I will be doing this every day, every stage. So there you are, there's today's image, climbing for the team.